Welcome to Booze Under Rocks, and today we're going to make a bonsai margarita. And as you can tell, this is a variation of a classic margarita. However, it's an unusual set of ingredients for a margarita, and I found that in this, the Ultimate Bar Book, The Complete Guide by Mitty Helmick. Now, there's a good thousand recipes in here. However, uh, the print is so small for an old guy like me, I need some glasses. Now, there are some interesting ingredients to this, well, or called for specific ingredients, one of which I don't have, but I was able to make a substitution. So let me go over the ingredients with you. The first thing you need is a silver tequila. I'm using a little bit of Alto Mecca. I find they work really good in uh, margarita variations. Put your favorite uh, tequila down in the description down below, please. You also need a melon liqueur. Now I'm using a little bit of Midori. It's what I happen to have on my shelf. Now this has Yubari and musk melon flavors. So that'll give you sort of a unique sort of twist to the cocktail. Now the recipe itself calls for Harlequin orange liqueur, which I cannot get. So I did some research because I wanted to see what you could use as a, a substitute for that. Now the first substitute that comes up, of course, is a little bit of Grand Marnier. However, in my uh, margaritas, I prefer Pierre Ferrand. It's a dry orange curacao, so it's not quite as sweet, but it's still based off the same cognac and orange flavors. Your next ingredient, of course, is lime juice, because what's a margarita without lime juice? But instead of using a simple syrup or an agave syrup, this uses a super fine sugar. Now, for a super fine sugar, you can use icing sugar, or you can take some regular caster sugar, and you can uh, break it down with a bit of a blender or a ninja or something till you can get that super fine consistency. Now, it is a shaken cocktail, as you would shake every single margarita. And again, we do need some lime juice to start this. So roll your lime just to soften up the insides a little bit. What we'll do is we'll cut this in half, and what we'll do is measure a half an ounce and pour that into the glass. Your second ingredient, which is your base spirit for the cocktail, is silver tequila. Now, I did say I was using Alto Silmeco, and for this cocktail, I would go with what the recipe recommends of uh, silver tequila, because a Reposado or even an Anejo will obviously change your coloring, but it'll change your flavorings as well. Now, you do need an ounce and a half or 45 mils. Now, for your third ingredient, which is melon liqueur, the recipe doesn't call for a specific type of melon liqueur, so leave that up to interpretation and find the best one that you like most. Now we are going to use a total of one ounce or 30 milliliters. Now your third ingredient, of course, is the orange liqueur. I did say I was using uh, Pierre Ferrand. Now, as I said, it is a dry curacao, means you don't get as much sweetness. And this actually works based on the other two sweet, very sweet ingredients you have here, again, the melon liqueur is very sweet, and so is the sugar. Now, you do not need a lot of this. This will just give you some orange notes of half an ounce or 15 mils. Now, the next ingredient we're going to use is the sweetener. And unusually in this recipe, it calls for super fine sugar versus, say, either an agave or a uh, simple syrup or a rinse simple syrup. And this is actually asking for a lot of uh, this powdered sugar. In this case, we need a full tablespoon, which would be a heaping bar spoon. Now, interestingly enough, this drink looks just sort of like a uh, honeydew melon, nice light green with a little bit of white rind, because all your super fine sugar is actually just going to sink to the bottom. But your next step is to fill this with a bunch of ice. And you wanna get your, uh, your glass basically almost full, three quarters to full. Give this a good slap, flip it. Now you're gonna have to shake this really hard because you really want the sugar to dissolve. All right, you're gonna pop that off with the strength of a thousand tons of sugar. Put this off to the side. And what we're going to do now is prep our favorite glass. So grab yourself your rocks glass of choice. I'm using a 12 ounce or 360 ml glass. And what we'll do is we'll use half of our leftover lime. We'll rub half the glass and dip that in salt. Now, one of the reasons I don't like to actually rim the entire glass is because not everybody likes to have a mouthful of salt while they drink their margaritas. Some people don't like salt at all. So I always give people, including myself, the option because people in my family like the margarita 
totally differently. And this is a more unique variation. So what we'll do is of course, fill the glass with uh, some ice, grab your Hawthorne strainer, dump it in. That does look really, really good. Now the garnish that the book calls for is a lemon twist. I'm going to use an orange twist just because I think it'll stand out better. And here you have a bonsai margarita. Mm. Oh, that's good. Uh, with the salt, really, really good. You get that salt. It hits that initial spike and then continues all the way down your mouth after the cocktail goes down. Oh yeah, good either way. I think a little bit of salt in this cocktail would be fantastic as a way to really kind of boost this cocktail. If you like margaritas, take a look after the recipe card right over here.